Hello everyone, welcome to X Reality. Um, kind of like a, the Mozilla first time hosting Mozilla event, and we are with uh, our speaker. Uh, do you want to give us some intro about today's event? Yeah. 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 Sure. Uh, can you speak louder? Okay, so where are you? Like, which one is the one that I need to see? I see a lot of board, mm -hmm. right? Oh, oh, the the, the one next know. to you, it's, right? It's, uh, it's the one next to me. Okay, okay. So do you wanna have your speech? Cause I am pretty much shooting right now. I'm yeah. recording right now. Yeah. Okay. So do you wanna oh. start? So on on the back uh, after the meeting, you this room is still still be open. Uh, on the back you will have a video about Cape Verde, if you want to, to see it. Mm. And uh, in one of the boards uh, you have the agenda, in the other one you have more or less uh, the, uh, what services can be offered. Mm. And uh, in the other board you will have a quick demo. Mm. You can also uh, play that demo mm. uh, if you want to see the uh, start from the presentation. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Let's start from presentation. And, um, the main goal was to share with you, <laughs> to share with you yeah. the challenges that um, we are facing in order to build a, a VR room and also the motivation. Okay. I don't know, I'm sorry, I don't know where to start this. But uh, it's uh, here. It's in the middle of the presentation. Okay. Oh, can you speak louder? Yeah. Yes. Speak louder. Uh, yeah. Right. Great. Thank you. Yes, yes. Of course. Of course. It's in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, and uh, between the African country, African um, continent, and the American continent. All right. So it's considered an African country, and as you see, it's uh, we are in the in the middle of the, the ocean. It's ten, uh, it's ten islands, okay, separated by a thousand or kilometers between them, uh, and the, the the students don't have possibility to make. Uh, business trips as in other countries. Right? Normally you uh, have business trips uh, for in your school where mm -hmm. you uh, go to museums. That are considered historical. Mm -hmm. uh, of course they have something or we have something but it's not so much as uh, in, in Europe or, or in, in even in, in other places in Africa. So the near, the nearest museum uh, is in the country, is in Senegal. It's about 650 kilometers away. Mm -hmm. uh, in Dakar, it's, uh, it's a 45 minute plane travel and it, cost, it costs uh, more or less 300 US per person. So for 
for most of the students it's impossible to, to go uh, to go there. So the idea was to give them the possibility to see uh, other places uh, outside the country. Mm. Okay, so they went to uh, field trips. Uh, and, uh, the field trips they do is going to the beach to play. Mm. Not to a museum or to a monument. Mm -hmm. So can virtual reality simulate a field trip? It's not the same thing for sure, but uh, we think uh, at least they have a feeling what is going on in another place. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we decided um, to build one virtual room in the school. Uh, which uh, is a Portuguese school, I don't know if you're aware. But we, <coughs> we had some challenges, and we have still facing some challenges uh, regarding what uh, options uh, should take <coughs> place. Uh, first of the first challenge is what is the right target? <coughs> So should the VR headset be for what to use? So there are two main mm, options. One is the set and the separate headset. Mm -hmm. And the other one is the standalone headset. Separate headsets are expensive and they can use uh, a PC, a PC or a PC. And the, st the standalone uh, have cheaper. But they uh, have a limited run time for the running uh, batteries and uh, are hard, harder to manage mm -hmm. because if you have a, a separate headset, mm -hmm. you can you also have a, a normal monitor which mm -hmm. is normal display where you can set up everything and you can do the headset as a secondary bit. If you are using a standalone headset, you don't see anything is happening inside the headset, right? Yeah. I don't know <laughs> if you already uh, tried a standalone headset. It takes, it has its own operating system. It's an immersive system based in Android, and you are immersed. The operating system. So if you want to, if you want to control what the people are seeing or what uh, is happening, that's hard. Mm, yeah. The, so the second choice was the second challenge was choose the right software. Mm, so right. we needed uh, because we wanted to use a standalone headset. Yeah. We, we need to have a device management mm -hmm. and a content. Yeah. Right? So the, the question is the device management that uh, exists right now in the market mm -hmm. are uh, MDM, I don't know if you know MDM, mobile device management. So mm -hmm. there are platforms that uh, are used to manage mobile phones mm -hmm. um, that. Um, Supports now the VR headset. Uh, how uh, so you have like a MDM? How about for example like a standalone, like Oculus Quest or some other, uh, VR headset or MR headset or just mobile and put into Gear VR. Uh, right now we support any Android device. You will see. Mm. Um, after that, we can support even tablets or oh, okay. any uh, Android mm. operating system device. We, mm. can, we can support. Cool. So the uh, and so that was the, the second challenge to have a device manager, okay? mm. yeah, uh, and to have a content manager. Most of the content management systems that we found mm. are focused on 360 video. Mm. Uh, and uh, uh, needs to have uh, a client installed, uh, a specific client installed, 
don't, uh, don't leverage existing uh, content platforms like YouTube. You need to download the video from YouTube and then upload in the platform or create your own videos. Like that. Uh, mm -hmm. And even not support, don't support the web itself. So you want to use uh, any link for the uh, experience, you need to find the, the, the URL to, to get into the, mm -hmm. the room or into the website to use the web itself. Okay? So that is support the limitation. The third challenge okay, mm. was the choose the right content. So yeah. we saw that there are three types of content, okay, mm. 360 video, mm. native app in the uh, web itself. Yeah, and right. For 360 video, we think it's uh, real complex to use. Mm. You need special cameras, you yeah. need uh, big editing skills. Um, so in the, it uh, has some other advantages, so it's supported by lower power devices mm. like Oculus Go, mm. so Oculus Go supports well, uh, 360 video, yeah. but it doesn't support so well the web XR, for instance, mm. and uh, is, um, it has good availability, so there are a lot of 360 video already, so you can see this to sell or to buy, so there are platforms that they are using this to distribute this kind of digital video. So it's a uh, wide, wide, uh, have a, it has a wide availability. Then the native app, you can use your app with your experience, and uh, of course there is also complexity complexity about it, you need to use a gaming engine like Unity or mm. Unreal uh, or if you have a difficult skill you can, you can do it in Android also uh, so it is extensive to use the program right now that do it uh, about too many applications and um, you need the user training, so you need to train the user to, to go and install the, the application mm -hmm. and then to run the application um, when, you, when you want them to, to, to run it. So, or if you, if you are in a multi-user room, okay, if you have a room with uh, a lot of users, mm. the users will have to run the application mm. uh, for themselves. So each yeah. one will run the application and they will not have a, a synchronized experience, right? Mm. And uh, um, it has also uh, a complexity uh, of management. You have to install the application with all the devices, mm. then you need to uh, train or uh, give instructions how to uh, run the application for the users. Then uh, and there is another problem with native apps that you need to build the app for each of the platforms. So if you have an app for uh, Oculus Go, you will you need to compile it again for a mm. and uh, like um, live or HTC you need to compile to those and uh, distribute the packages for each of the users. Mm. The, then you have web XR, okay it's uh, for me it is in the uh, experience it's not a product uh, uh, production okay you can run experiences like we are doing right now fitness your apps <coughs> but it's in, in its infancy okay 
Grazie a tutti, 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 So for example, like a um, like a three hundred sixty video, um, it, it it's like a um, it's expensive, right? You have you, you need a lot of like a good cameras to catch the the asset. It's and it's hard to produce. And as for mobile, it seems like you have to build some uh, different applications. But web XR, if we can make web XR really easy. Uh, everyone, as long as they have internet and uh, the web browser, they can access. Even standalone, um, like Oculus Go, they have browsers in. As long as we make the uh, URL really short, everything like really easy. Or I I, I don't know right now because um, I saw like Oculus updates. You pretty much can use hand gestures. And when you put on headset, you can see kind of transparent ghosty, like a reality. So I feel like uh, Oculus Co uh, Quest becomes, yeah, r like really powerful right now. It becomes VR and MR. And if you do MR, you can do AR. So pretty much everything. Yeah. So yeah, so I think WebXR definitely has a lot of potential to go viral if the interface is easier enough because right now uh, I went to I just went to our uh, X reality meetup page and I saw a person uh, Shelly like our uh, our our group members Shelly she was asking me how to access Mozilla and then I I mean Mozilla compared to a lot of um, a, a lot of software or platform it's already pretty easy to use I mean if and I believe people join our group they are kind of nerds or like they they are probably like um, I would say 10% better than like the top 10% who can handle all the nerdy um, complicated development stuff so if people who is in the group couldn't figure it out how to even access to Mozilla then we need to figure out how to make it so simple that for example if I click the the event link it's similar to zoom that if I click the link I can just go in and just ready to go yeah I mean that might be better because right now I test some different uh, VR platform or MR platform I feel like the problem is that it's so hard to use and there are a lot of beta and like a confirming code and it just I don't know it's just so confusing so yeah I mean if I couldn't figure it out then I don't believe that my family or my mom my younger sister can figure it out yeah so yeah just yeah just um, just uh, having some comments. Yeah. Okay, go ahead, please. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I think you are right. Uh, I, I'm also a person that knows about technology and I have some, some not difficulties. But it's, uh, I needed some time to figure out how to enter, for instance, in the, in the out space. So it's. Uh, it's really a hard as to try to make out cost of zero, right? Yeah, right. Here, with the three clicks, you, you can enter. Uh, you just need to, to click three times in the, in the world button and you are in. Mm, yeah. 
I mean, Mozilla probably is the easiest one I used compared to like, yeah. I mean, all space is cool, but there are, you know, you can hit like a, a controller and there will be millions of tags on the controller. I was like, what the heck, what should I do? And when I was in special that I all like a special uh, virtual reality room, it, when I used the desktop mode, I couldn't like I, I couldn't see myself and I feel a little lagging. But when I use the um, Oculus Quest, I feel much better. But the thing is I let I couldn't leave the room. I mean, I was trying to figure out how to exit the room, but I couldn't. I mean, yeah, but I think special that I all the whole experience are really, really good, like really high end and the visual looks really good. I think Mozilla is probably the most, the, the easiest one, easy to access, easy to use. And then all space is kind of the premium one. <laughs> it's like, like you can see your whole body uh, avatar. That's amazing. Yeah. And then I think we'll, the the WebEx WebEx Arms or has the advantage of because you just see the browser. Yeah, right. You can click on anything. Mm. The enrollment is easier, but of course, of course, there is still limitation. We started to has two years, I think, and there are some limitations. Even yeah. the ed editor, even the, the space editor doesn't have so many uh, possibilities or options or you cannot develop because you don't have any plugin to begin with. It is uh, the graphics and also mm. you, you still have no way to go from one place to another without doing the enrollment again. If you have oh a, yeah, you have right. A link, yeah. You have a link to another room. You needed to. Yeah, and then you need to take out your headset and look up your email and see the code and kind of like put your headset on and type the code. And sometimes I'm so confusing what's download inside, what's on my browser, and what's the inviting code and what's the you know confirm code. It's just so annoying, and sometimes I need to go to my Oculus store and figure out what's. Like uh, like the app you are participating or you are preview pre previewing or something like there are a lot of steps that need to be done and I feel like if I f I, I couldn't really figure it out then I'm wondering <laughs> who can figure who can figure it out in my family yeah just 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 I I'm probably the mo uh, the 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 nerdiest girl in my family. If I couldn't figure out, then probably my whole family couldn't figure out. And my whole yeah. family is probably as kind of like a, the same as other people's family. So probably majority of, I would say 80 to 90% of the population couldn't figure out how to do VR, AR conference, which they lose the opportunity because for example, like a Zoom, make it so easy, right? You click the link and you already launch and you don't need any email address. You don't need any whatever. You just click the link and you are in the the, the whatever, uh, the video conference. But even Mozilla, you have to, for example, when I wear the my Oculus, I still need to, you know, type the code, type the URL. Yes. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, so I don't know, I, I feel like um, VR, there's some steps that will prevent people to use. It's just not, um, I would say not normal for people to kind of getting so many confirmation and I still need to download whatever apps, I mean, special, like a special die or some other VR conference. I still need to um, uh, download the, the app in my Oculus Quest. So it makes like my friend just like explore when I have to do so many steps and things just lagging, you know, so yeah, I think it's still in its infancy. So that's why um, people still prefer like a video streaming or like a look at the video. 
but immersive technology definitely has its advantage to uh, present. For example, like presenting the uh, the the presentation looks much better, or it feels like a. For example, like I'm in a room with you right now, and I feel, mm -hmm. yeah, I feel like we are closer than. On the video conference, video conference, I feel like it's two dimension, and sometimes we will get distracted by you know sometimes someone texts me or call me and I just like or there is something I browse the website while doing video conference I just get distracted. But if I wear the VR headset, I feel like since I'm immerse myself in a room, I feel much much like my attention can. I can concentrate more. Yeah. Yeah, it's true, it's true. And all, all of those um, uh, problems that you spoke, um, we try to address with our solution. So mm, yeah. that's why we decided to build your our own solution. Because mm. there was no easy device management platform. Mm. And there was no easy content management. Okay. Yeah. So all of those. Um, tools were very hard to, to a prof, uh, teacher to use. Uh, mm -hmm. how, how do you how do you tell a teacher that mm -hmm. uh, they want to or how do you tell a, a student uh, mm -hmm. which never uh, which don't, don't, don't have a computer at home mm -hmm. how to use Operating system, which is an, uh, an immersive, an immersive operating system. So we needed to, to develop uh, our own solution, okay? Mm -hmm. That not only supported uh, the, the device management, but also to support the execution of code. And uh, that's why we, we decided to, to build it from from scratch, all right? Mm -hmm. So and and also one of the thing it was. Why do you need to, to make your own content if there is a lot of content available? Yeah, right. And, uh, and uh, but it's not possible to, to distribute that content inside the, the, the headset. Hmm. Uh, another thing that we, we decided and we realized was how to, in uh, a room with 50 people, how to make the experience um, go smoother between all of them, right? Because mm. if you, uh, as you said, you you go to to a website or web website mm. or to a video, yeah. and uh, uh, if you don't have any way to show uh, all at the same time the mm. uh, the content, yeah. people will not have. Um, the same experience, right? Yeah, right. So, and uh, another thing that we we came up with the why uh, the reason why we developed this is that the standalone headset will, will grow over the next next few years. Okay, mm -hmm. we will grow at least sixty times mm -hmm. um, because of the advantage of the what they have, okay? Mm -hmm. You don't have uh, wires, so you can use wireless, everything is wireless, and uh, you don't need to have a, a set, fixed set of rooms for, for it mm -hmm. to detect the, the, the room, so it has a, a lot of advantages. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we think the, the standalone asset will, will be the main thing uh, in the couple of years. But uh, they have the problems that we already talked, which are the management and the uh, lack of uh, lack of um, skill and understanding of what what goes inside of each each mm. So, what we are doing? Hmm. We mix it in a MDM, the hmm. mobile device management, uh, yeah. with the CMS, with the content management system. Yeah. Right? And we did the proposed build simple UI UX hmm. uh, to, 
and not uh, something very so weak that you don't you need to uh, take a, a training in the first place to do it. Uh, it's a multi vendor support, we now support Pico devices and uh, Oculus, so that is useful. Mm. Uh, but uh, also any kind of any one device can be can be managed as tablets, TV box. Mm. It's a cloud based solution so you, you don't need to install a special software that you mm. have you have a server in the cloud to manage it. Mm. Uh, and it's a mix between device management and content management and it also supports many types of content like WebXR, mm. 360 video images, 360 yeah. YouTube videos or other plat other video platforms. Mm. And um, it can uh, also make uh, application run at the same time in several devices. For instance, if you want to show your app, you develop uh, an app, mm. and you want to show uh, your app at the same time to a lot of people. Mm. You just need that to people install the app, of course, mm. but if you want to, the app to run all at the same time, you can do it with our platform just need to um, set up the, the what you want to do. Mm. Uh, I will show you uh, in the demonstration. Mm. And you will see that the app will run simultaneously in all of the devices. Uh, for example, like WebXR, you mean like a live streaming or you can open um, WebXR 360 video or, or, or how, how, how does it go? Like, for example, I'm a teacher, I upload on the back end, and then I, I can get an URL, and the content such as uh, 360 video images, uh, v video, audio message can be shown in a 3D space on the website. Is that what you said? No, no. <laughs> no, no, okay, go ahead. You can, uh, you can send the command to the device to open those, okay? Mm. Oh, so those are the content types. And the device will open it in the, in the, in the video uh, application, okay? Mm. If you send a new URL, the mm. device will open a browser with a URL, right? Oh, I see. Mm. Okay. Mm. Uh, so it's not uh, it's not uh, um, a competitor of Space or Mozilla mm. Apps. It's something that can enable those platforms mm. and to uh, manage the devices that will open those platforms. Mm. In the YouTube, right? Mm. The 360 video. You just need to send mm. the video to the devices, and the devices will open mm. the YouTube client all at the same time for that video. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think you will, uh, you will uh, understand better in the, in the demonstration. Mm. So, what are the, the key features? Okay, it's, uh, Mm. You need to you need to monitor the devices, you need to control the devices. Mm. Cool. Yeah. Okay, so what's next?
No. 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 Hello? Okay, so as for uh, user cases, yeah, just helping out. As for user ca uh, cases, uh, it's impossible to send any content to the uh, device or uh, group of device such as WebXR, video, online video, audio, oh, and that's a, oh, image files, apps. There are many use cases that can be uh, uh, addressed. Education and training with an easy to use and simplified UX UI that enables teachers and the learners to enter in the extra market with short learning curve. Uh, so it's possible to integrate with existing web-based e-learning tools. So this means be because it's so easy to um, send to any device uh, such as WebXR and then so pretty much you can yeah do everything. Okay, thank you. Okay, so Casino, I couldn't really hear you. Can you hear me? Is that because of my mic? Casino? Hello? Can anybody hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Hello? I'm not gonna hear you. Oh, that's great! <laughs> I thought like I'm... I'm in a zombie, zombie city <laughs> where I see some avatars, but I couldn't really hear anybody. Okay, great. So I don't know where is Gazi, uh, Gazilo. I couldn't. Okay, so where is? I text him. I don't know. Can you hear him speaking? Or just me? Okay, let's see. Immersive sync. Hello? Can, are you here? No. Oh, oh, great, great, great. Oh, this is a chat. Oh, there are so many things to learn in uh, VR conferencing because it's just so new. Uh, okay. Yeah, so for the virtual meeting, um, yeah, virtual events, virtual class, and virtual training rooms. Uh, so from Immersive Sync, we can see uh, they provide uh, different services such as device management, uh, and then immersive content management, virtual room creation, virtual collaboration tools, Avatar customization and 3D world building. Pretty much everything like 
yeah, like a a a, a pretty good decent size of a virtual conferencing or uh, presentation uh, VR uh, well, VR platform or XR platform. Okay, so yeah, so let's see what else. Okay, so this is the back end design. So it looks pretty easy to use. It's simple. So all you need to do is to choose whatever device you want to use. For example, if you only have like, like some tablets. Uh, yeah, I think that is tablets. Okay. Or you have iPhone, you can pretty much, I, you, you can pretty much use it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, I'm trying to fill out the silence. <laughs> yeah, if you go to Zoom, you can see I'm recording live in Zoom. So pretty much I am share my screen. If you go to Zoom link, and I am trying to do this because some people they went to Zoom and they see oh there's nothing and they leave and think oh there's no events so <laughs> i'm trying to pretty busy right now <laughs> okay so do you want to say anything let me come closer I'm to you right now? yes okay Great. sorry for that i don't know what happened maybe it was something uh, here yeah. with the browser yeah i i totally understand because sometimes um the internet well down or slow or frozen and uh, everything just crashed mm -hmm. so i wish after 5g like if we we enter the the 5g era then this can be like really smooth like the experience without any interruption and that would be great yes yeah, i really i hope so <laughs> yeah Cool. And uh, any questions? Anyone? Hello, Pinda. Do you have questions? <laughs> okay. Uh, like for example, like how can I use this software similar to Allspace that I download the software, desktop software, or Oculus software, or Pico, like. Okay, okay. Okay, great, great, great. Because I'm wondering, like, how this works. Is this like a Mozilla? Or how, like, step by step, show me how this works. That would be great. Thank you. Uh, so, where should I go to see the demo? going on did, did i just do anything yeah, it, it, yeah i did I mean, oh I, you, you did okay yeah, great 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 i thought yeah, like yeah. what's going on i just look at that and everything just fallen yeah i think virtual space still i mean probably it's because of myself i didn't really familiar with that so i feel that 
there are a lot of stuff that need to be learned. For example, like, yeah, the the world becomes like a, I don't know, it's kind of like a little weird. Cool. Let's see. Like this. Oh, cool. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. You yeah. Have to set that oh, it's like a billboard. <laughs> you put a screen on a 3D mesh, like a, a billboard. Yes. Okay. So, what's the difference between yours and Mozilla? Like your platform? There are different things. This is a device management and content management. There, there is no. There is no really space. This is just to control the device. Okay? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, something that controls the data might confuse me. Maybe everyone knows, but I just don't know how this work. If, for example, like Mozilla, it's easy if you tell me that, oh, you go to this website and you go click this, enter the room because it's all visualized and it's tangible. So I, I know how it goes. But as for uh, data management, it seems everything is storage in the cloud and something just streaming somewhere. And it's a little abstract. So people might not knowing what's going on. Yeah. So if you can give us demos, that would be great. Yes. So this is um, what, the, what the platform does. Mm, so yes. we have the registered devices. Yes. So you, you know if the device is online or yeah. not. Mm. Okay. Yeah. You have the name of the device, you have the battery percentage mm. of the device, and you have the temperature. Mm. Yeah. So, and you can also have another detail, which is the operating system, which is the RAM that you can confirm right now, and storage network information, okay? Mm. That is all of what you can do with the device today. Mm. So it is uh, a way for you to know, for instance, in a room, if mm. you need to replace or not, or charge the battery mm. of a device. Okay? Mm. Well, how do you know in a presentation in a VR room if you need to charge or not to the device, right? Mm. Okay, and here you have the battery yeah, percentage right. yeah. and the temperature. What, what if I see it's running out of battery? What can I do from this interface? I just see it and probably I just text my friend, hey, you are running out of battery. Or I can click something and charge for them. No, no. This, this interface is... Um, it's like, um, let me explain, let me try to explain. This is um, a way that you have for you to manage the devices from mm -hmm. outside the device. So to know what oh. is happening in and the device. How can I connect? Outside the device. Yeah, how can I connect? Like my Oculus Go, how can I connect to uh, this okay. software? Yes, uh, you need to install an app. Oh, app. And you just in the, in the app there is a code, mm. and you just need to enroll, oh. click here, mm. and write the code, mm. and then you are connected. Your device will appear here. Oh, so I still need to go to my Oculus, download one of the software in order to get the code. And is the code every time is different, or the code is static? No, 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 no. It's one time code. Oh. After that, you can do everything from here. Is the code easy to remember? Or you can customize so six the digit code? code. Oh. Six digit code. So you mean like I have to hold my Oculus Quest and then remember those six digits and take it down and kind of type it. If I type wrong, I need to go back and see it again and yes. type it down. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Or if you know, if you know the MAC address of the device, uh. you can just give it a name and put the MAC address here. Mm. If, you, if it is in the, for instance, in the box mm. of your equipment, mm. you just need to type it here 
and then you don't meet with the girl. Oh, mm -hmm. I see. Yeah. So, so, so basically, you still need to have like a verification. Um, yeah, because I I find out that the reason why it's it's hard for people to uh, to access those um, VR conference is that installation, verification, authentication, and then all the coding, like back and forth that. And then especially it's so not user friendly when you want to type something on the keyboard while you yeah, you, you you need to remember all the code and go back to your Oculus and then use like a, you, you need to grab your handle and start you know typing and then you need to put down your like you know like the the, the controller and then you need to put down everything and you need to use keyboard. I think the process is yeah. is. It is it's pretty long and not really user friendly. Yeah. Yes. Uh, here is the other way around. You just mm -hmm. see the code mm -hmm. in the asset and mm -hmm. you type it in the computer. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So after that, mm -hmm. uh, you can manage the device. What can you do? Mm -hmm. uh, you can, for instance, uh, create groups. Mm. of devices mm. okay. or you can connect to another Wi-Fi network. Why? Mm. Uh, we, we talked in every scenario mm. and for instance we, uh, imagine that you have an event mm. in a room mm. with uh, 50 uh, VR headsets. Mm. Okay. So uh, you need to go to the, that room and you need to connect to the Wi-Fi of that room uh, on each of the devices. So you need to enter, to power on the device, to enter, mm. go to the menu, mm. configure the new network, and then mm. you have Wi-Fi connection. Okay? Mm. What we did is uh, we can configure here uh, what will be the next Wi-Fi connection that you will have. So mm. you are staging all the equipment in your office, mm. and then you say that in the final client, you will connect to a different Wi-Fi network. And you can configure that future Wi-Fi network that will be connected. Mm. And then when you turn on the equipment, the equipment will connect to the, that Wi-Fi, right? Mm in order to don't need to go to each of the devices and configure the network on the device. Mm. Here you have the list. You have the list of all the applications that are installed in the device. Mm. This is the applications that you have installed in the device. So if you want to run an application, mm. you don't need to say to the person mm. that they need to go to the menu, find the application, mm. and run the application. You just need to hit run up, mm. and automatically the application will run in the app. Oh, then for example, like uh, it's just wrong. For example, like uh, I have a hundred students and I press like, like at 10 o'clock, I press the first one. And at the end, when I press the a hundred student, like the number eleven, uh, number a hundred student, and it's already ten, ten, ten. It's like a, so the first one and the last one will have like time difference. For example, you see like I need to run app, right? There are so many buttons no, if no. I need to. But you can run app in a group. Oh, yeah, that that's much smarter. Cause if I need to hit a hundred times. Then the first one yeah. and the last one will have like 10 minutes yeah. difference. A group of devices, only mm. three applications appear. Why? Because it will detect automatically which mm. applications are installed in every headset. Mm. Okay. Mm. So I have two headsets and the Firefox uh, mm. uh, is um, installed in both headsets. Mm. When I hit run app, Hmm. The, the Firefox will run in all the headsets at the same time. Oh, that's that, that's much better. Yeah, I felt like I have to, if I, I have a hundred guests 
and I need to hit a hundred times like run F, then the first one and the hundredth one will have like time difference and at the end you have like different yeah. people see different things and talk about different things. Yeah. That's why we, we did the groups. So uh, as for those apps, are those interactable or are those just like playing? For example, like 360 videos are really different than all space, a social interaction room. Like yeah. what types of so, apps you support? Uh, we just run the app, okay? Mm. If it is all space, you'll then to uh, have to make the login in the app normally. Okay? Mm. We, we just send a comment to the headset saying mm. that to, to run the app. Mm. So uh, it doesn't interact from the app in, inside the app. Mm. Okay? So students still need to, for example, okay. So if run app that button, it means that uh, I need to install something on my device, right? So you run the app, it's application. But if it is WebXR, is that run app? Oh. Yeah. No, no, it's not. I will explain to you. Uh, if I see the other so, uh, you can go here. To do groups, uh, yeah. you can do it a smart group. If you say that all of these devices are connected in the welcome Wi-Fi, mm. then I just need to save as group. After that, I have a group of devices. Mm. <laughs> or by location, or by tag, or by operating system. Mm. You can group the devices, and then I can send the RAN app all at the same time to all the devices. Mm. One uh, interest, other interesting thing that you can do mm. is, mm, you can run the app, but you can say that you want to start on boot, mm. okay? So, uh, imagine that you have one single video or one single app that you want all the devices. Um, every time you, you reboot the device, the same app opens. Mm. Imagine that you have 100 equipment to do mm. that. Yeah. So, you have to go to 100 oh, equipment. But if I, I want to select, select a certain people, so there's in front there's like a select right if i only want to select like a top 10 students they can watch like a, uh, some uh, disney cartoons and the rest need to run like oh so bo super boring english class <laughs> yeah. something like that can you do that you can yeah you can group the devices mm -hmm. for the students mm -hmm. and you can start uh, uh, you can configure to start on boot one mm. application for Disney and mm. every time the device turns on it always goes to, the, to that application yeah. and for the other group it will go to other application of English class. How about like a web XR, like w URL stuff? Yeah, yeah for web XR. Let, let me just show you. Mm. Uh, for that we need to go to content. Mm. Okay? Mm. Here we have a library. Mm to put content in the platform. Mm -hmm. And what is content for us? It's, not, yeah. uh, it's everything that you want to have. So content mm. can be an app, mm. can be out, can be video, can be image, can mm. be a file, can be a link, mm. can be a comment or a message. So you, you can also support messages to the to send message from here to the devices. Oh or any other yeah. comment. Uh, for example, like when teacher teach, it's not just like a playing a video. It's more like a uh, online teach. For example, like a, a teacher wants to teach like a American history. Uh, he might start showing PowerPoint and later on jump into like YouTube video or jump into whatever drawing board. And then he might shoot himself a little bit 
and then see the student a little bit and then come back. More like interaction rather than like, oh, playing a web browser for an hour. Yeah, so how can you deal with those multi, uh, multimedia, like kind of like a randomly jumping jump out? How can you deal with that? We do it that two flavors. Okay. Mm. Uh, we have uh, what is a playlist. Mm. Playlist is a uh, uh, some action mm. that we can play mm. on the design. Yeah. So for instance, we have video. Mm. We have uh, play video. Mm. So we have the video, mm. but we can have new action mm. so in the same play. Mm. Okay. For instance, if I want to play this video, mm. and then I will, I want to send a message to the student. Mm. Okay. Send a message. Uh, message one, okay. for example. Mm. Mm. Uh, people, people, uh, video. And how about if I want students to take quiz? <laughs> then you can do the quiz in the website and then you can do it. Oh, yeah, right. And uh, if the student want to talk or ask questions to the teacher, how can they do it? By voice or need to be by it's texting? Uh, it's not really possible right now uh, for that. You will have to have uh, an application like Mozilla Apps mm. and uh, do it from, from there, okay? Oh. If you for more uh, advanced scenarios, you can just do your room in uh, Mozilla Apps mm. and then to share the link automatically to all the students to enter in the room. Oh, yeah, 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 right. So, so yeah, yeah. For that, I will, for instance, use our room. Mm. In the URL, mm. and I need to see another action mm. by the URL. Mm. Okay, here I can do this one. Mm. Okay. So, is this already ready to go or still in the beta mode or just prototyping? I think for uh, for piloting, uh, it is ready. Okay? Mm. So what I did was I put three actions: one yeah. is a video, mm. another one is a message, and another one is open our room mm. on Mozilla. Mm. So what can I do right now? I can go to this playlist and I will play it on a device or in a group of devices. Mm. When I play in a group of devices, I hit play mm. and then I have that player. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's great, that's great. So, what uh, can, can I shoot myself? So, sometimes I have some. Similar to Mozilla, I can kind of share my camera or share screen in the, I don't know, in the 360 videos. <laughs> I don't know. No, no, no. No, o only just like play the content. Uh, the, yes. the teacher couldn't really interact inside yes. e each sure. action, I see. Uh, or oh. the minimal uh, action will be the messenger, right? You can yeah. message. Yeah. Oh, I see. All the devices at the same time. And can, can you I talk? Play? No, you cannot talk. No. Okay. Talk, uh, uh, we are, we are, uh, it's one of the features that we are talking, we are thinking about implementing it. Mm. Uh, but since uh, I, we saw the Mozilla apps, maybe it's better to use uh, Mozilla app to do just this kind of interaction. Oh, I see. So, so basically, have, uh, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. For instance, now what you will do, you will play the video, hmm. okay? And yeah. in all the devices, the video will play at the same time. Hmm. 
then you will send a message mm. and uh, all at the same time you will see the message. Oh, can, can, can you play? You oh. open the browser in the Mozilla app. Okay, uh, can, can, can you play so I can see what's going on? Is this ready to go? Yes. Can you keep playing? Yeah. Uh, Perfect, but uh, I will have to share the device so you can see. Okay, cool. Uh, this is really an yeah, yeah. So I, I think this is really convenient. But I'm wondering right now, it's it, right now we are in quarantine, right? So my students might live uh, in their house. So how can I manage all the device? I, I just need their device and then I can play, right? Yeah, so you can. If you, uh, you do the your playlist, huh. you just ask for the student to take the device. Mm. After they have a status with online, mm. you will send the uh, content to the student. Oh, and status means that, oh, this student is using, and the off one is that, oh, this student is not using it. Yes. Okay. Let me I think I have to share my screen from a different place and mm. show you that. Okay. Let me just stop this. Yeah, I think this is pretty convenient because it's organized all the device so the teacher can kind of control what content to be played in the VR device. Yeah, understand because this is kind of like a pioneer, let's say, kind of pioneer stuff. So everything, if everything crash, I, I totally understand. <laughs> This is the picture. Are you seeing it? Oh. Oh, that's cool. That's really cool. Can you enlarge it? Just like yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that that that's that's awesome. Yeah. And then this guy is it works for a group or for a device. Mm. Hmm. Oh, this is a game. Pretty cool. Hmm. And what if people are uh, like kids? They are playing games. Can they play games at, at the same time? You can support you can run the game all at the same time mm. and then put on the Oh so so basically you just control the trigger, right? Start and stop and switch the screen. You just do the controlling screen. Screen control. Yeah. And all the uh, interaction inside the app, it depends on the app itself. How Oh, okay. So, uh, for example, if I want to open like all space, uh, this software is pretty much control like groups of device that start and stop all space. Yeah. But whatever activities inside all space, it depends on how people like how all space construct their contents. Okay, got it. Hmm. And you can show your invention, you have to show how do you share this, mm. you have to mm. Oh, can you speak louder? Okay. Cool. 
cool. Thank you. You can go to content, and mm -hmm. this uh, is the art drive or the disk of the device. So mm -hmm. this is a video mm -hmm. that is inside the, the device. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. can upload mm -hmm. other videos and other content to the device. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Centrally. Right. Yeah. Okay, let me just uh, choose here something to show you. Mm -hmm. Cool. Even rename the file, mm -hmm. and the file will be renamed inside the device. Okay. Oh, I see. So pretty much, um, you can revise the file name, and probably you can revise the device name to the student's name, because you couldn't remember yeah. the device name or like the ID number, but you can remember your student's yeah. name. Oh, yeah. Correct. Mm. So now. Include this in a playlist. Mm. Go to my video playlist, mm. and I will do a new action, mm. and I will play video. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh. I will say that this is a three hundred sixty video. Yeah. Right. Uh, cube mm. video, right? Yeah. I think this presentation is really cool because I haven't read like I visit a lot of some like a, a VR conference room, but I haven't really had a presentation inside a room. It's just like oh, browsing around and see what's there, but I haven't really <laughs> get in. But I, I didn't use my my device. However, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's so hard to, you know, like record or present inside the VR headset. I mean, desktop is easier. <laughs> so, uh, okay, now let's I see. see. Oh, where's the message? I didn't play the message yet. Yeah, yeah, I wanna see like a... What? Pico. Oh, that, that is message. I see. I see. This is the connection. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think if we want to do this, 5G is really important because if the internet is down, then, <laughs> then, then this will be hard to, you know, sync everyone and the experience won't be, won't go smoothly. And how about, can I put a 3D model in? For example, oh, for example, I, I host in Sketchfab and then put URL and then people go to Sketchfab. Yes, uh, Fab. I see. You can do it. It's another, another. It's just to put the branch. Hmm. Okay. That's it. Okay. Okay, you see the video? Yeah. Um, not yet. Okay, you can see the play. Oh, I said. Is that launched today? As you know, SpaceX is this launching today. <laughs> this was a video of Alto Porto City. Right? Oh. And the message that I was. I triggered the message now. Yeah, and yeah. It shows the message in the headset. Oh, that's cool, that's cool. If I open Mozilla app. Hmm. 
Mm. Right. Cool. Cool. Yeah, I mean that that would be great. This can be then for one device or for a group of devices. Oh. All at the same time. Wow. Like, what's the maximum uh, device you can have in this platform right now? Uh, it depends on the machine that we run, because since we don't have any heavy customer yet, uh, we, we are running in the in the small machines, but this is all cloud-based, so we can, we can put in any machine that we want, so if we want to scale. Hmm. We just put a, a bigger machine and we can scale. We didn't made any uh, stress test right now, uh, hmm. but uh, I think you will not have any physical limitation about to, about it. Hmm. Just to run a bigger machine or several machines uh, concurrent. So we, we built it this in AWS, in Amazon, yeah. so we can scale whatever we want. Mm, nice. Yeah, I, I definitely can see the possibility because right now all the platform is since like a, um, you have the account, you go inside and you enjoy the experience or you send to people more for adults. But as for students, it might need uh, the teacher to kind of like unify the class so uh, it can be played or controlled at the same time. It's different from the adults, like, I mean, even adults conference room, it might be good if someone like a speaker wants to say something and everyone is at home and it's good for someone who wants to train the other people, uh, like get fully control of the experience or the content management inside other people's headset. So yeah, mm -hmm. so this, so what's the name of this platform? It's called yes. XR one. XR one. X XR man management. XR man. Oh, XR man. It's like an X man, but XR man. Yes. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Sorry, I just correct. Hmm. Pretty cool. You can, you can also have mixed the uh, mixed kind of. Uh, um, Devices. For instance, if you have uh, groups of tablets, you can do also for tablets. For instance, if you want to to show a YouTube video for mm. a thousand tablets, mm. how do you do it? You have to send the URL by email for mm. the students in order for them to open. Mm. Here you can open with one click. You can open mm. that video for yeah. all the devices. Mm. Yeah, I think this is definitely like another level of uh, like a teaching education or like training uh, inside like headsets. Like it's a pretty cool uh, content management software uh, inside uh, XR headsets. Yeah. So yeah. So do you have anything to share or we can go to Q&A? and ask if anyone has questions. Yeah, Q&A, anyone? Anyone has Q&A? Okay, uh, I think I asked a lot of questions. So when do you think this uh, platform can be launched? Uh, it depends on the, on the person that we have, uh, on the clients that we, we, we have. We are looking for some, some clients that want to test the platform and to help us testing it and building it. And uh, after that, I think we can launch. We need a first client that really uh, wants to be our, our partner and wants to uh, sh show us a new, a new use cases. Mm -hmm. um, I 
suggest you can, can close the, the product uh, uh, or if uh, there is any financing or any uh, want to, that wants to be with us and uh, make it uh, a sellable product, we, we are open to, to partnerships for sure. Hmm. Okay, but if you have any any client that wants to test it and wants to uh, run it a trial or a pilot, we are open to it. No, no problem. Mm, yeah, that's. I think that's great. Uh, so yeah, I think that's definitely a really good and a really unique platform that for uh, students and then for teachers to having like fully control of all the contents that that's that 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 students see so yeah so uh, do you have anything you want to say or we can have a photo together oh sorry i, I think did, did i just talk, toss it up? <laughs> Yeah, do you want to bring the, the screen back or somewhere and we take a photo? And then I will upload this to Google Drive. And then, um, yeah, and then I will also upload to, uh, and I will share the file with you so you can uh, do your marketing stuff. Then, uh, yeah, then I will keep uh, uploading and share so more people can see the, the software. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool, sure. Yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Mm -hmm. Hey. Hi. Oh, sorry, I don't want to. Okay. Cool. And uh, what do you think about this Mozilla? Uh, uh, I think uh, this this one is. Uh, I think Mozilla is really easy to use, very easy to use. And then even though I couldn't get in on my headset at the beginning, I just don't. I just couldn't hit the entering room in my. In my headset, it's disabled, continuously disabled. So I have nowhere to click. So I just give up. So that's why I use desktop. But desktop is great because I can use uh, OBS or something. Yeah, like screen recording uh, software to record the whole web browser. I mean, in Oculus, I can do that. But I mean, it's much easier to do in in a 2D way. Because I mean, two hours inside Oculus headset uh, will make a person really tired. I mean, I, every time when I have a VR meeting uh, or meet uh, or VR conference, I just feel tired after forty or thirty minutes. Yeah, and my yeah, I don't know. I just feel dizzy. So I think Mozilla is really smart. They use you know web browser and absolutely everyone can access and you can also build your 3d room and i think this is absolutely for uh, people who uh, who doesn't who, who don't have the uh, the device they can still access yeah so i think mozilla yeah is pretty good <laughs> i like it okay so are you still here Hello? Consilo? Okay, so... Oh, Consilo? Are you here? Hello? Oh yeah. I mean, I think in... Hello, Consilo? Hello, Hello. yeah, so... Yeah, thank you for joining the, the, the meeting. I know it's a little confusing and I, I saw uh, on my 
uh, let, let, let me show my browser. I saw on the meetup, uh, if you guys want to join, please join the, the meetup. The, the whole meetup is called uh, X Reality. And every Saturday, we, f we kind of feature one uh, speaker, like a uh, top, um, and let the speaker share their expertise, their products with us every Saturdays. That's my goal. And my goal is that no matter it is New Year, Christmas, or July 4th, uh, tomorrow, we just keep running. And then if nobody is speaking, then I will go speaking. Yeah, whatever. Just keep the, the ball rolling. And then, yeah, so, yeah, so thank you for joining. And then, I, I mean, if you click the online event, you can pretty much go inside this. But... I know there are a lot of people that they, they couldn't get in. So yeah, if you cannot get in, I apologize because I didn't realize that um, like this is kind of new to people. And then we probably have to have another video link to teach people how to access to Mozilla uh, before showing them the link. Like before the link, we need to have a tutorial to help people to get in the Mozilla. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And thank you for. Can I ask how to pronounce your name? Like Gonzila, is that right? Gonzalo. Gonzalo. Okay. Yeah, it's not too far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Gonzalo. Thank you for Gonzalo. And then yeah. And then see you next Saturday. Okay. See you. See you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Yeah. Bye bye. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, that's leave the room. <laughs> that's cool. Uh, how to how to leave the room? If you, if you want to leave the room, you just need hit space. Hit space. Oh! Ah! <laughs> okay. Thank you.